Moving forward, but still staying in Conference USA, we have Western Kentucky, a six and a half point road favor at Louisiana Tech. This game has an over under of 59 and a half points, and it kicks off Thursday night at 8 p.m. on ESPNU. This line opened at Louisiana Tech plus seven, and uh, that was scooped up almost immediately. If you were really quick and very lucky, you may be holding a Louisiana Tech plus seven ticket. Uh, otherwise, we saw some resistance for Western Kentucky come in at minus five and a half. Now, but back up to six and a half. There is a rain chance in Ruston. Uh, it's tapering as the day goes on, though. I don't think it's going to have a huge impact on this game, but do know that there is potential rain in the forecast. Talking about Louisiana Tech to quarterback Jack Turner. That's right, not Hank Bachmeyer. Jack Turner has been starting in place of Bachmeyer because he has been injured. And uh, Turner hasn't been great, but neither has Bachmeyer. Bachmeyer has actually been atrocious this year. And I think the uh, the change there has been a net zero, maybe a half a point difference, in my opinion here. The wide receivers haven't helped him out either, though. They have seven drops in the last two games, and that is when he took over as a starter. I don't know if it's necessarily seen the ball come out differently. I don't know what the deal is, but they have a bunch of drops. Last game at UTEP, which was a 24-10 win, mind you, he only had a 45% completion rate, two turnover-worthy throws, and get this, three balls bad at the line of scrimmage. Jack Turner's six foot five. That There should be zero balls bad at the line of scrimmage when you're six foot five. He just has such a low release and throwing it into the line. That's not great, and he was also sacked twice. Malachi Corley, we know the name well, Western Kentucky's top receiver. He has 41 targets over the last three games alone, but they're still using him almost exclusively as a yards after catch guy, yak guy, which is fine. He's really elusive, very, very good with the football in his hands, but a low A dot, low yards per reception. He's not really accruing the, the production, perhaps, outside of targets and receptions. Uh, he's almost an extension of the run game at this point. Like, they just fire that ball out to him uh, because their run game at Western Kentucky is is very bad. Uh, it's really inefficient, and they don't try it very much. So their version of the run game is, hey, let me throw a flash screen out to Corley. Let me throw a bubble out to Corley. Maybe a little bit RPO action. Uh, just get the football in the hands of your best player. Louisiana Tech, they have a corner named Willie Roberts. He's absolutely locked down. He's only allowed seven receptions on 30 targets this season. And get this, these aren't inaccurate uh, attempts. Sometimes the targets are inaccurate. They go out of bounds, whatever. They get dropped. No, no. Willie Roberts is forcing incompletions on 44% of targets come his way. That is the highest in the nation uh, with a minimum of 15 targets. He's all He is a wide corner, though, so he's playing cornerback out wide, playing the wide receivers, whereas Austin Reed really hyper-targets his slot guys. That does include Malachi Corley. 40.6% of his targets are going to the slot so far this season. Depending on the personnel, you get Michael Richard, uh, Cecile Singleton. Those are the primary slot defenders for Louisiana Tech, and their slot coverage has actually been really solid across the board. For me, that's that's a matchup I'm really focusing on for Western Kentucky's offense. I expect a lot of dime personnel on Thursday, and uh, the matchup, again, really great in this, this case. I'm excited to look at I'm excited to watch it. Louisiana Tech's pass defense versus Western Kentucky's passing attack, that is. So, Brett, as we talked about earlier, since Jacksonville State is not eligible for the Conference USA Championship game, this conference race for me is really all about Liberty and Western. Uh, however, if there was to be a third team in the hunt, by my numbers, it would be Louisiana Tech. In this game, I have Western minus 6.5 to 73% win expectancy. Hilltopper offense is the best unit in this game. They rank number 68 nationally for me. That's second best in Conference USA. The defense has been slightly better than expected. Uh, they rank number 96 nationally. That's up from number 107 in the preseason. So we're not talking about a world beater, but better than preseason. That's always a good thing for teams. Like Western, the Louisiana Tech offense is the better of the two units. They rank number 91 nationally. And while this Bulldog defense has improved, I projected them to be worst in FBS coming into the year. Uh, they are still the worst unit in this game, but they're up to number 120 nationally. So at least they're not last nationally anymore. Uh, they're second to last in the conference still. Bottom line, uh, I think the Western offense is just too much at home. I have Western minus six and a half. It's a 31% chance that Louisiana Tech uh, gets to three and O here in conference play. Excuse me, on the road, Western here on the road. Um, for what this does to the conference championship game projections, because I have Liberty and Western Kentucky power rated so much higher relative to the rest of the conference that actually win or lose, Western is going to remain number two in the odds here, and Louisiana Tech is going to remain number three, given what these teams have in front of them. Currently a 75% chance that Western makes the Conference USA Championship game. If they win, that jumps to 82% chance. If they lose, it falls to a 53% chance. So now it's almost a 50-50 proposition, whereas right now it's three out of four. Louisiana Tech, 
They're at 23% currently. A win bumps them to 43%. A loss drops them to 13%. So Louisiana, given where we are with the power ratings, that Louisiana Tech realistically wants a chance to make it to this conference championship game. I really think they need to get this win because then they'd have that tiebreaker over Western and Western would have to, you know, have a better record, not just the same. Um, assuming we don't get some three-way tie with Liberty in there, which I don't think we will. So Western's in a good position. A win here basically cements them in there and Liberty's kind of already in that boat given what their power rating is. So um, this could, one way, one way or another, this game is going to dictate how exciting the Conference USA race is moving forward, at least from a number standpoint. Yeah, for the aggregated power ratings that I use here, uh, Liberty, uh, I have them rated about five and a half, six points higher than Western Kentucky, who's another eight and a half points higher than Jacksonville State, who's ineligible, who's another point and a half above Louisiana Tech, just to give kind of the spread there. And then between Louisiana Tech and UTEP, who I have rated last, uh, about a touchdown spread between all the rest of the teams in Conference USA. So it really is a one or two horse race, depending on your view. Uh, if the books do end up offering Malachi Corley reception props, not receiving yards, but receptions, uh, it's almost an auto bet for me. Anything under nine, uh, just kind of target share these getting, he's getting 11, 15, 13 targets a game. Uh, so I would probably bet anything less than nine. I'd bet over that. Now look, Louisiana Tech's numbers are pretty good on defense. I, uh, well, I, well, sorry. Louisiana Tech's numbers are better than expected on defense is what I should say here. Uh, that's the more appropriate way to say it. But the average offense that the Bulldogs have played this year rank 84th in EPA per play. Now, there's a pretty stark difference here versus teams that are over 90th in EPA per play. They're allowing 39.5 points per game and just 18.3 points per game uh, against the others. Uh, Western Kentucky's 48th. I'm probably looking to over 33.5 team total points for the visiting Hilltoppers. And they're also really good on early downs. Uh, they're 11th in uh, early down EPA. Louisiana Tech is 36% on third down conversions. That is 91st. Uh, so there's a little bit of a lopsided measure there where, you know, are they converting to third downs? Are they not? Interestingly, though, I'm not a big trends guy, but I will throw it out there. Sonny Cumbie is 3-0 outright and 4-1 against the spread as a home dog in the last two seasons in Ruston.